How's it going everyone? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. So on this video, we're going to be talking about secondary maintenance. Now we all know that or we should know that we should be maintaining our vehicles. And if you're watching this channel, it's because you do care about maintenance on your vehicles. And we know that oil changes, brake fluid, trans fluid, uh, tire rotations, alignments, uh, brakes and stuff like that should be changed and checked pretty frequently and change when needed. So a lot of these things that I'm gonna be talking about today are often overlooked. So uh, this is why I am making this video. A couple of people have asked for me to make this video uh, at a couple times so here we are going to make this video for you today if you want to add anything to the video go ahead and drop a comment down below and we can all learn from one another so with that being said let's go ahead and get started with today's video So first things first is a PCV valve. Now, uh, this should be, be getting changed every 30 to 60,000 miles. Now, back in the day growing up, there was always the infamous uh, tune-up. That's not really a thing nowadays because tune-up typically would be, um, you know, sugar cap and rotor, spark plugs, wires, uh, fuel filters, and stuff like that. A lot of that stuff is long gone or not serviceable. All we're doing nowadays is filters and spark plugs and a PCV valve often gets overlooked. So very cheap for you to buy. A lot of times you can even do it yourself. I would recommend between 30 and 60,000 miles. I personally do it on my vehicle every 30,000 miles, but you could go ahead and take it out if you don't wanna purchase it and just check its condition by taking it out. Usually it's screwed in or held in by a bolt or sometimes even just a grommet and you could shake it. If you hear a clicking, the valve is still okay. If you don't hear it, that means the valve has failed and you should be changing it at that point. Something else you could check very simply is your AC drain. Just make sure it's draining. Anytime you turn on your AC in a hot summer day, it should be a draining and dripping underneath the vehicle. If you don't see this, chances are you may have some uh, leaves or a cobweb or something stuck in a drain. You could take some compressed air, blow in there, and just make sure you start a draining process at that point. If you are, if you do have a clogged situation, some of that water may leak into your interior and then causing some smelling issues, some mildew, some mold, stuff like that. That's not something you want to uh, deal with, not as pleasant thing. So you don't have to go and check this every uh, you know couple months, but it is good to do just anytime your car is running and you just happen to walk up to it, just make sure it's draining and that's all there is to that. All right, another thing is your sunroof drains, right? So this is very simple to do. Uh, so the sunroof is designed to where it does leak water past the seal around the sunroof drain. So it does have, at least on Hondas, two drains typically in the front of it on each corner. I have a couple pictures up uh, for you guys to see. And I like to just pour a little bit of water in there and just visually check that nothing's clogging the hole up. Uh, sometimes leaves and debris get stuck in there and then may cause an interior leak, something that you, again, don't want to have. So uh, I like to take water and just pour a little bit of water in there, maybe with a cup or something like that, and just watch it drain somewhere around the uh, fender well area. So uh, check that on both sides, very simple for you to do, and just clean any debris off the track, off the, the sunroof at that point too. You don't want nothing getting stuck in there, a twig, or any leaves or anything like that, and the sunroof coming off track. All right, so another thing you're going to want to go ahead and check is your door drains. Yes, your doors do have drains, and those seals are not 100% seal proof. So water does get inside your door, and it's supposed to drain out of the bottom. So if these drains get clogged, obviously you will have some sloshing going around when opening and closing your doors, and even sometimes while driving. Also, your components inside the doors, like your window regulator motor, could go ahead and rust. So you're going to want to go ahead and just take a pick if they are clogged, a pick or old uh, wire hanger or anything like that, and just kind of uh, open and loosen that debris up and let the water drain out. Very simple to do. Probably have to do this once every couple of years, unless if you park again underneath a lot of a lot of trees or anything like that. But typically speaking, this doesn't clog up too often. But from time to time, we so, we do see this being an issue. Another thing to do is lube your door hinges, your latches on your trunks, tailgates, uh, anything like that, your doors, 
and your door checks. Some of these door checks are a separate unit from the door hinges. Some of them are built into the hinges, but you could go ahead and take some Shinitsu grease or something like that, maybe some silicone paste, and apply that to those door hinges. Sometimes we see them as the cars get older, they do get some rust on them, could cause some squeaking situations. So not a big deal, but something just to keep an eye out for. Also try to keep any gunk or anything like that building up in there. Just clean it off with a rag, apply some new silicone paste or Sinitsu grease, and like that, you'll keep everything running as smooth as possible. All right, so another thing you wanna do is make sure you're cleaning your uh, trunk or a tailgate from any debris. So a lot of times if we see some buildup, eventually it'll make its way onto the seal. And at that point, the seal will no longer be working properly and having a good seal causing a water leak. So uh, once in a while, maybe every car wash, go ahead, take a, a rag in there, just wipe off any debris with a blow gun or a rag and just make sure that you don't have any accumulation and that seal is doing exactly what it's intended to do. You're also going to want to go ahead and take any debris off your uh, cowl. You could do this a couple different ways. You could just grab the leaves and debris, pick them up, throw them out, and then kind of blow them with a gun afterwards, uh, get you know the little stuff out. Or you could go ahead and take a vacuum and suck all that up. Now, if you use the blow gun, there's a chance, or if you leave them on there for a long period of time, that some of that stuff will make its way into the cap and air filter a lot of times when we pull them out we'll see pine needles some leaves uh, stuff like that sometimes uh, there's some rodents in there um, but that won't be that issue particularly that'll be another issue but anyways um, if you go ahead and use the blow gun, chances are those little particles will make it onto the cabin filter, sometimes causing some uh, smell, and that's just something you want to try to avoid. So especially in the fall months, you're going to want to go ahead and take off the leaves maybe once a week or something like that. If you live in an area or park in an area where there's a lot of trees, obviously you want to be extra cautious of this. But the vacuum method here is the best. Now, if it's gunked up in there, you're going to want to just grab them as gently as possible and throw them out and then vacuum up the small stuff. So another thing, this is going to be very area based is wildlife. So you want to go ahead and make sure you, uh, especially in the winter months, open your hood and just check for some wildlife activity. Here we see a lot of rodent uh, activity in this area, sometimes some squirrels, sometimes some raccoons, sometimes some possums. So really just be alert on where you live. If you park next to a dumpster, you're probably going to get a lot of rodents and uh, stuff like that. So just be alert and just open your hood once in a while. If you see any sort of, uh, you know, a chicken bones or a nest or anything like that, which we do see here in this area, or some paw prints, or you get a strong urine smell, then obviously something is living in there when you're not using the car and it is parked at wherever you're parking. So at that point, you're gonna wanna address that immediately to avoid having some uh, of these rodents or animals eat at your wire harness and causing you unneeded expenses. So be very particular and very aware of where you park and just your surroundings and just check your area, especially in the winter months under your hood for any of this activity and address it immediately if needed. All right, so another thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use Shinitsu grease once again around like your sunroof drain and your run channels and stuff like that. Keep everything working nice and smoothly. Uh, keep your windows on up nice and smoothly. Even on newer cars, sometimes we do have to, to use Shinitsu grease just to kind of get everything uh, working properly. Sometimes they sit in lots for months and months and months and kind of everything starts drying up. So just a good way to keep all your seals nice and moist and keep them from deteriorating with you know the harsh elements. So the next two items are gonna be taking care of your exterior and your interior. So your exterior, you're gonna to wanna to get it maybe detailed once a year, get a ceramic coated for a couple of years. And like that, you make sure your paint is protected as much as possible for as long as possible. Also, if you have a light colored car, you're gonna to want to wash it pretty frequently because if leaves and stuff like that get on there, it kind of stains the paint. So you wanna kind of be particular to that. Also, if you have leather interior, you're gonna to wanna to moisturize it at least once a year, uh, probably every couple of months if, if needed, um, especially in a hot, uh, hotter states like Florida, Texas, stuff like that. Uh, probably wanna condition those maybe every six months or so, but definitely condition them at least once a year. Just keep that leather nice and soft and you don't have any cracking or premature cracking over time. Well, this next two uh, tips are gonna be for people who uh, don't drive the vehicles for an experience 
extended period of time. So if you uh, use a vehicle for a summer car, for instance, or you travel in and out of the country, maybe in your military or something like that, and a vehicle is unattended for a certain amount of time, probably four, five, or six months at a time, or even longer, you're gonna wanna overinflate your tires to try to avoid um, you know, having flat spots on them, or even better, put the vehicle on jack stands if you're gonna be away for an extended period of time. Now, you don't have to do this, but if you do come back to the vehicle, expect to have flat spots on the tires and the car to kind of ride on like it's on square blocks. So uh, just something to be uh, alert of, especially if you don't drive the vehicle often. Another thing is you're gonna wanna purchase a battery tender and hook it up to the vehicle, again, to maintain a battery and make sure when you come back to your vehicle from whatever it was that you were doing or you know using it uh, parking over the winter now go, using it once springtime is around once again uh, you want to maintain that battery so you don't have to go and purchase a two three hundred dollar battery every time you go and uh, let it park for the season or whatever the case may be whether you're you know driving a seasonally or you're away for an expen extended period of time so hopefully this video was helpful to many of you out there if you have any any suggestions make sure you do drop a comment down below and i'll catch everyone on the next one